What is up YouTube, welcome to Card Fight Casual. Now today's video is dedicated to new players who might have just discovered the game or old players who want to see how things have changed in the V series. That being said, whether you're new or old, stick around and you might just find something interesting to think about. Today I'm going to be taking a look at what makes Vanguard tick, that sweet sweet math. Calculating your attacking columns to reach the ideal numbers and forcing your opponent to guard with more cards from their hand. One thing that makes the game easy to pick up is that everything in the game works in increments of 5000. What do I mean? Well take this for example. I have my Great 2 Knight of Silence Galatin and I want to attack my opponent's Embodiment of Shield Lam. Right now we're both at 10,000 power. If I don't boost and simply attack, it will cost 5000 shield to guard. However, suppose I boost it up with a Margle, my power now goes up to 15,000 power, and now he has to guard with 10,000 in order to successfully block the attack. Now suppose I change the Margle to a Knight of Squire Allen, my Galatin's attacking power goes up to 18k, but my opponent still has to guard with a 10k shield, so why bother changing the boosting unit? Suppose we swap back to the Margle, but now I'm facing an opponent who is ridden to grade 3. Now I'm facing a 13,000 power base, and a 15k attack is reduced to 5k shield to block the attack. What's more, a rearguard with anything below 13,000 must now be boosted or have some sort of power gain effect for its attack to even hit. So you see how hitting the numbers 13, 18, 23, 28 and so on make a difference. Well let's take a look at some basic columns. Seems easy enough right? Virtually every grade 2 has 10,000 power, and almost all the grade 1s have 8,000 power. But hang on, notice that I'm only showing Kagero and Royal Paladin units? Let's take a look at a standard grade 2 grade 1 column for Oracles and Novas. Here we see that the base power for Protect and Excel clans are in fact reduced by 1,000 power. And here's where Bushiroad's design for Force being a more balanced clan between attack and defense really starts to show. The 10,000 power Force Imaginary Gift showed us how Force was indeed all about the strong attacks. But how about defense? Force Gift Markers only work on your turn and not your opponent's. With a plus 1,000 power, it makes guarding a standard attack from any of the other two types of clans much easier. Take a look at Extra Muscular. Upon standing for the turn, suppose he has an Excel Marker under him, he would reach 22,000 power. That would be good against any 12,000 power base Vanguard. However, against the grade 3 unit like Alfred Early, only a minimum 10,000 power shield is required, found on grade 1s and any trigger except for the draws. That's like any card from half your deck that can block this attack. Of course, you could power up your rearguard units and put a 9k vanilla booster behind it. But if you do, as far as we know, you'd be filling your deck with 9k vanillas with no shield and no special effects that may not even be necessary against 2 out of 3 imaginary gift matchups. Now here's where things get a little bit more advanced. Suppose I'm a force player, and I have a field that looks like this. I've just ridden Alfred early, and now I get to choose where to put my imaginary gift force marker to give one of these columns 10,000 power. Which do I put it on? Which one did you pick? Well in the past eras of Vanguard, this wouldn't really matter at all. Every grade 1 and 2 had 5,000 shield, and every trigger except for the draws had 10,000 shield. But now, front and critical triggers have 15k shields, while heals have 20k shields, and grade 1s are bumped up from 5 to 10. Let's take a look, shall we? We see that if we put the force marker on the 18,000 column, it bumps it up to 28,000 power, requiring at least a 20k shield to guard. That means you know that for sure, the opponent has to drop either a heal trigger, one of only 4 in his deck, provided they haven't already been damage checked, or at least 2 cards to block the attack. Now if we put it on the 23 to make it a 33,000 power column, you know that at the minimum, your opponent needs 2 cards, a 20k heal and a 5k grade 2, or a 15k shield and a 10k grade 1. What is interesting here is that by forcing your opponent to discard 2 cards, you may actually force out more shield than what is required. A 15k trigger is used almost exclusively for guarding, while grade 1 units with higher base power and abilities are preferred for boosting your vanguard or rearguards. 
What this means is that there's a good chance your opponent will want to keep those precious grid ones, and instead drop two 15k guards for a total of 30k, especially if you're playing a deck like Kagero, which can easily take out rear guards. What's more, taking a look at the other column that you didn't put the force marker on, an 18k column will force at least a 10k shield, while a 23 will force a 15k shield. If we apply the same logic from before, the 18k column might actually force them to drop a 15k shield, same as the 23k column. This is of course all working on the assumption that your opponent will be guarding all of your attacks and that no damage triggers have gone off. Plus, if you're observant and remember what cards your opponent has drive checked, or perhaps you're familiar with the build of your opponent's deck, you may be able to guesstimate how much shield he has in his hand spread out all amongst the different cards. Another change you might not realize the significance of is that increasing the grade 3 units to their higher bases now actually makes the grade 3 units better attackers than their grade 2 counterparts. In eras past, they always seemed to be equal to or better than their grade 3s, making grade 3s that you ran mostly perfect guard or stride fodder. In the V era, however, it seems like swapping a grade 2 rear guard for a grade 3 one will raise the quality of your attacking column albeit at the cost of that 5k intercept, a change I believe that highlights what was always the intention with the difference between grade 2s and grade 3s in the rearguard circles. It's interesting to note that by simply changing the numbers, Bushiroad is making the game much more complex, raising the skill cap such that more experienced players can actually use some strategy, while still keeping the core rules of the game easy enough for anyone to pick up. Going forward, it will be really nice to see Vanguard rewarding players for having a greater understanding of the game. All in all, it's clear that Bushiroad is really planning and looking far ahead to balance the game and make Vanguard an all-round more interesting game. I hope you enjoyed this video and one more very much like this will be coming out very soon taking a look at card advantage and what it means in Vanguard. Very soon we'll be seeing the first ever cards released for the game, the trial decks coming out in just a week. Till the next time, have fun, and remember, it's okay to play casual.